Hey, South Everett Foursquare, this is Pastor Chris, and this weekend we are launching into a five-week overview of the wisdom writings found in the Old Testament. So this includes Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and the Song of Songs. And this weekend we are giving our attention to the life of Job, as recorded in the book of Job. Now, the wisdom writings dive headlong into the deepest, most profound mysteries in life, which include the most baffling amounts of pain and suffering, which seems unjustly experienced by so many in the world, both in biblical times and also today. Uh, But Job is the story of a righteous man who suffered greatly, a man who wrestled with God faithfully in the midst of his suffering. Now to date in this journey that we've been on in the Bible Project, the video that the Bible Project has done on the book of Job has been my absolute favorite. This video points towards the hope of God in suffering and leaves us with fantastic questions about how we can grow through hardship, how we can increase empathy in our lives for others, and how we can respond to injustice that we face in our midst today. So I really want to invite you to take some time to view this Bible Project teaching on Job uh, and also these personal reflections, which you're watching now, as we prepare for our third week of Little Churches this weekend in backyards around Everett and on Zoom. As I was doing my own reflections on Job this week, I was reminded of my freshman year at Seattle Pacific University in 1998. And one of the first courses I took was called Faith and Philosophy. And our professor was in his late 20s. He had frizzy hair and glasses and the tweed sweater and the elbow patches, the leather shoulder bag, the, the whole bit. It was everything you'd imagined a philosophy professor at a university would be like. And Uh, Each day, he would saunter down the steps into the lecture hall. Uh, He would come to the front. His shoes were untied, and uh, seemingly his head was in the clouds. He was somewhere else. He was thinking about something else. Uh, But he was never in a hurry. That was one thing I appreciated about him, and he was always glad to see the class, but he'd put his bag down, and then he would wander over to the window and just look out at the birds and the trees and just be in that moment for a minute and uh, that was in Alexander Hall looking out at the at the loop just a just a beautiful courtyard there at SPU Uh, but once class settled in he would refocus he'd bring his attention back to the class and he would open up his mind to share his deep ponderings about God and his interactions with the world Um, and uh, Dr. Cuneo uh, he was one who really modeled for me the first time what it meant to think deeply about God He invited us into consideration of the most wonderful things about God and also the most perplexing things as well. And together as a class, as freshmen in college, as 18-year-olds, we learned to grapple with humankind's oldest arguments uh, for and against God's existence, uh, for and against his goodness, for and against his love for us as his people. And this course was challenging. Uh, It was uncomfortable, but in the midst of that discomfort, it was comforting to know that God's grace was always providing enough security for me as his child to search God out through a very, very ambiguous set of contexts. And, uh, you know, to study for one of these philosophy exams was to simply sit with the arguments, to sit with the implications, and to sit with the conclusions, and to allow those things to settle into my soul Uh, so I could measure them against God's word, which we know uh, today is still unfailing. God's word is unfailing. Um, This all came to mind because this is what we see Job doing in the midst of his own suffering, in the midst of his wrestling with God and with his friends who enter into him, uh, who enter in with him to rigorous debates about God's goodness and his character and his love for people. Um, So in preparation for these exams, myself, I would share these lecture notes that I had from from these courses with my dad. And uh, over the phone, we would discuss uh, these ideas from famous philosophers. And we, as Debbie Jackson so beautifully put last week, learn to love God with our minds. And that is a really, really beautiful thing. And so I'm forever grateful for Dr. Cuneo. And as I walked through the Bible Project summary of the book of Job this week, I was taken back again to this season in my life, more than half my life ago, and and I'm just really, really glad for it. So since that time, 23 years ago, uh, it never seems to fail that the more I consider God, the more I consider his character and his creation, uh, the more I consider the beauty and the mess, uh, the more I am assured of the goodness of God. After all, 
who else would give themselves fully to this mess uh, that we are in this mess that we live in, uh, this depth of brokenness, just to turn it around and redeem it for his glory. You know, who would do that? Jesus would do that. And Jesus did do it. He continues to do it today through the lives of those who were created in his image. God continues to bring his goodness and his justice and his righteousness to the world. So as this video from the Bible Project in Job teaches this week, it is from a perspective greater than our own that we come to see that there is a profound order in the midst of the chaos that we see before us today. There is absolute truth, even in the midst of uncertainty and the confusion that we see in our culture. Um, there is such a thing as black and white. As we seek redemption from our sin and our dysfunction, uh, Jesus is the fullness of God in flesh. Uh, he is mighty to save sinners, or he isn't. It's black and white. It's one or the other. It's not maybe Jesus can do it, or maybe Jesus can't. He can. That is the truth that we live by. Uh, and to this end, there is no middle ground. Now, with that said, the more time and attention that I invest into responding to brokenness in people's lives, uh, the more I'm coming to find that the existence of black and white truths don't exclude the presence of some really perplexing gray areas in life. Uh, and at many times we tend to steer clear of the really messy issues of faith, all the things that Professor Cuneo invited us to ponder as college students. Uh, and we avoid these things because the consideration of such things makes us feel uncertain, unsure, and, and quite often very uncomfortable. But again, God is okay with those things. Um, specific considerations like how could a loving God allow for undeserved suffering in the world? Now that is a messy contrast at best. I won't take time to explain that now, but if you have questions about that and would like to ponder it and discuss it and sit in the mess, uh, let me know. We will go out to coffee and we will sit and we'll enjoy an afternoon and we'll talk about those things and God delights in that. But we have to grapple with questions. How can a good loving God in, in such horrible evil in a world coexist? How can those things be co-realities? Um, they can be, and there's no doubt about that. We see it in front of us. However, um, this mess uh, is worth diving into as people who trust Jesus and stand for uncompromising truth. In the end, however, unless we dive into the mess that we see around us, we run the risk of completely ignoring the suffering that exists in the world, suffering in our own lives, hardship in our own lives, and hardship and suffering in the lives of those around us. Um, and we'll avoid it because we won't be sure if God is real enough or good enough or powerful enough to handle it. But if we engage the uncertainty in our world, as people who are filled with God through the power of the Holy Spirit, we will always discover the certainty of God right in the middle of our search. And if we ignore the suffering and hardships in our own lives and in the lives of others, we will miss out on God's invitation to bring healing uh, to us and healing to others around us. And so Job is the story of a righteous man who sit in ambiguous places of pain and wrestled well with God and wrestled well with his community. And, and although it is a black and white truth that holds the book of Job together, there's a lot of gray to be reckoned with in between. And so this week in our study and our discussions, um, as we prepare for those discussions, I want to invite each of us to sit in the midst of some of that gray space, just as Job did, that we're going to follow the life of the examples of those that God gave us in scripture and do as they did so that we can grow as disciples. We can grow as people who love Jesus with our hearts, our souls, and our minds. And I will say this for certain, uh, I have never suffered like Job suffered. Uh, beyond that, I have not nearly come close to suffering as Jesus suffered. Uh, the author of Hebrews reminds us in chapter 12 that as we throw off our sin and as we throw off our struggle and as we are mindful of those who have gone before us in the faith and as we fix our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and the perfecter of our faith, that even in those places, it says in verse four, that we still in the midst of our struggle have not resisted to the point of shedding blood. Um, and we can remember that in our struggle and in our suffering, 
um, we follow after the suffering servant who is Jesus himself, who has invited us into a kind of death that will lead to a more abundant, more amazing kind of life. And so suffering, as Job has laid out for us, is not something to be avoided. It's something to be leaned into. Um, that is a profound mystery that only heaven will fully answer for us, but it is clear in scripture that that is the way uh, that Jesus has called us into. And it's a hardship that increases empathy in each of us and increases our motivation to find healing in our own lives and then to be the catalyst for healing in the lives of other people. That is the good that suffering does. So I invite you to sit with the discussion questions that I'm sending out uh, with this video today. And so if you aren't receiving those questions and you would like to, if you're not currently participating in one of our little church gatherings this summer and would like to, please reach out to me directly, the email address listed below, and we will get you connected. We, we've been having a great time in our little church groups, hanging out in backyards, just being authentically people of God who are working out our faith with fear and trembling, and we want to invite you into that. So, so as we close this morning, I just want to admonish you with the words of James uh, that are found in James's epistle in the New Testament about patience and suffering. And I think about and I pray for each of us in our fellowship uh, each and every week. And I think about the ups and the downs uh, and, the, and the victories and, and the struggles. And, and I just uh, pray that the Lord is giving you courage to faithfully live out the call that he has placed on your lives and as our lives as a fellowship. And so with that in mind, with your individual challenges and victories in mind, I, I just want to ask you um, to take those things to Jesus and to be comforted by the words of James in chapter five, beginning in verse seven. This is patience and suffering. James says, be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too, be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You've heard of Job's perseverance, and you've seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. So I look forward to gathering with some of you this weekend. I pray for each of us that we will grow deeply in our faith uh, in the midst of suffering and hardship and that we will allow those things to produce um, something wonderful in us. So um, praying for you as we head into the weekend. I'm headed out today to hang out with some of our City Life students. Um, it's an awesome thing to be South Everett Foursquare missionaries living out our faith in Jesus in the midst of those he's called us uh, to love and, and be in relationship with. So have a great day, church. We will see you very soon. God bless you.